What's up guys, it's Mitch here from the DIYRecordingStudio.com and today we're going to be having a look at part 2 of the MP566 Tube Mic Pre-Build. If you haven't seen part 1, I'll put the link up right here. And if you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit like and subscribe down below. But that's enough from me, let's get into it. <music> So welcome back to the second part of the MP566 build and the first component we're going to be soldering today is this little voltage regulator. Uh, it's a three pin little um, component and it's pretty simple. I just did what I normally do with most of my components this size. I used some electrical tape to hold it in place, soldered one of the legs, checked the orientation and then soldered the rest of the legs and then gave them a snip. And then the next component is this 225 volt voltage generator. And um, it was a little bit tricky to slot into the board at first, but if you usually give them a gentle wiggle, they'll uh, slot back in. And then I did the same again, just use some electrical tape, hold it in place, solder a leg, check the orientation, and then solder the rest of the component legs. Then the next component were these pair of radial inductors and they kind of look a little bit like a capacitor uh, except they're not polarized so you don't have to worry about their orientation and they go in pretty easily and you can just bend the legs to hold them in place and flip the board and then solder them in place and then snip the legs. And then there's this medium sized film capacitor which is a pretty large capacitor. I'd not seen one this big before in many of the circuits that I've done. Um, it slots nice and easily into the PCB. And I just, once again, same deal, just used some electrical tape and then held it in place and uh, soldered the legs and then gave them a snip. And then next up are a bunch of small electrolytic capacitors. And as always with electrolytic capacitors, you've got to remember that these guys are polarized which means that basically they have a positive and a negative side and you can see this on their legs in that the positive is longer but also if you're not sure about that you can look at the silver line that goes down the electrolytic capacitor and that is the negative side um, so you want to make sure you match those up with the PCB board because the PCB board has a little plus for the positive leg to go into and therefore the other leg goes into the minus side. And it's just very, very uh, important that you get this right. Um, you don't want to be desoldering these from the board um, and mucking around with all that kind of stuff. It'll be very difficult. These sets of relays, um, they're pretty easy to get in the board. They'll only fit in the board one way, so you don't really have to worry about mucking it up. Just make sure they slot in nice and neat. And then just use some tape to hold them in place flip the board, solder them, give the legs a snip, you'll be good to go. And then next up are three sets of switches, which are going to be ones for your phantom power, ones for your polarity reverse, and the other one are for your low, mid, and high gain settings. And the gain settings and the polarity switches are these silver ones, and then the phantom power switch has like a nice little red switch on it, so it's easy to distinguish. And the phantom power one needs to go at the bottom of the board and the silver ones um, just need to go above that one. So make sure you don't mess up the orientation first off. Make sure you've got them in the right places. And then what you want to do when you're putting these into the board is make sure that they sit very flat on the PCB. So what might actually happen is that the component sits flat on the PCB but the legs look like they're maybe not as flat as you think they should be, but just go with keeping the component flat on the board and the front legs nice and flat and even. Um, and then the legs which should fit pretty tight, but I used a bit of tape to hold them in place and um, soldered one of the front legs first and then checked that they were sitting flush on the board and then soldered the rest of the remaining legs. And I did one switch at a time just to make sure that each switch was sitting nice and flush and even on the board because if they're not even on the board 
you might have trouble mounting the face plate at the end of the build. So make sure they're very nice and flush and nice and straight soldered to the board. And then once they're soldered to the board nice and neatly, you'll need a good pair of snips to snip the legs on these components because they're quite thick. Um, but you need to trim them so they're not hanging out of the board too much because you don't want them contacting with the metal back plate later on when we put the boards together. And then next up are the medium size electrolytic capacitors. There's four of these. Once again, with electrolytics, you've got to make sure that you put the positive leg in the plus hole and make sure that they're orientated correctly that way. Um, so the silver line on the capacitor should be on the opposite hole, so the one that isn't marked. Uh, just make sure you get these right. And then bend the legs a little bit so they stay in place. And then flip the board and solder them and give them a snip. And then next up are one of the trickier components. It's the potentiometers for the input and output stage. And the first thing you need to do is place a bracket, this bracket part, on the potentiometer and then attach it with a lock washer and nut and then tighten them. And this bracket uh, is part of the component to solder into the board. So it helps mount the whole potentiometer to the board. And then you insert it into the PCB holes on the board. And then what you wanna do is solder the central potentiometer pin first and then check that the orientation is correct so that the, the potentiometer um, is parallel to the board, just like with the other switch components. Um, you need it sitting nice and flat. And the advice in the instructions is not to rely on the bracket being flat on the PCB. Um, make sure that the potentiometer itself is nice and flat on the PCB. And then once the position is correct, you can go and solder all the other pins and then finish tightening the nut to the potentiometer. And after that, you just rinse and repeat for the second switch. And soldering these components is relatively easy. They've got a nice big soldering um, hole basically to work with on the PCB board. So there's not too much trouble getting them soldered into the board. And the next component to go in is this variable voltage regulator. And it's kind of similar to some of the like op amp components and stuff like that that have and transistors that have uh, three legs. And it was a bit tricky to keep still on the board, so I just used some tape once again, um, flipped the board, um, soldered a leg, checked the orientation, and then soldered the remaining legs. And then next up, there's this component U2, which looks a little bit similar to the last component. Um, but it is actually a current feedback amplifier and it needs to connect to these two heat sinks and you attach those with the nut and screw there and then once they're nice and tight you can insert them to the PCB board and then as usual solder one pin check that it's sitting nice and vertical and even on the board and then once that's all good you can solder the other legs. And then next up is one of the more fine sort of components that you're going to have to build for this preamp, and that is the tube PCB. So it's a separate PCB that connects to the main PCB board. And first off, you have to solder two resistors to the board, and that's quite easy, just like we did in the beginning, bend the legs a little bit, and then solder them in place. And then you have to solder these 90 degree headers and what headers are used for is to join this little PCB board into the main PCB board. And those headers, you've got to make sure that when you solder them, they're nice and flush on a 90 degree angle. Um, this can be quite tricky. So like always, solder a leg, check the orientation, check that the pins are sitting at a 90 degree angle to the actual PCB board because it might make it difficult to get the PCB, the little PCB board in place and then have the tube sitting vertically the way it should. And then once you've soldered in the headers and they're nice and neat, you can solder the tube socket to the center of this board and that's not too difficult. And once you've done that, you can cut all the pins nice and flush to the board and once you've done this, it's time to insert this tube PCB holder into the main circuit board. Um, and the same rules apply. 
you want to make sure that you align it nice and vertical so the tube doesn't rub against the circuit board. Um, and I did this using some electrical tape, just as always, and then solder one leg and make sure that the board is sitting nice and straight. And then if the board's nice and straight, you can then go and solder all the other pins. And then you can give those pins a snip. And once that's done and the board's all looking nice and neat, um, you should have the tube assembly ready to go. And that's where we'll leave today's video. All right, so that's the end of part two for the build for the MP566 Tube Mic Pre from SoundSculptor.com. If you haven't already, please hit like and subscribe down below. I'm Mitch from the DIYRecordingStudio.com. I'll catch you soon.